Hello and welcome to this lab video on semaphores. Now, before we jump into the definition of and what are semaphores, uh, we will first have a look at the code that is given in here and we'll try to figure out what the problem is with this code and how semaphores can be used to fix those issues. Uh, so before we start, uh, just make sure that you have all the tools installed in your PC and uh, an ID of your choice. So in number two, there's a piece of code given and we need to run this code and look at the output. So I'll create a new project in my IntelliJ IDE. Uh, you can use uh, any IDE of your choice. So we are creating a Java project. Uh, you can give some name, I'll leave it to the default. So once your IDE is ready, you will uh, uh, create a new Java class inside this Java folder. Uh, I'll call this uh, file or class as main. So we get a empty class. Now I'll delete this class, right? I'll make sure that the file is empty and I'll copy and paste all of these code in my IDE. So after copying the code, uh, just uh, try to indent and make the code uh, look neat so it's easier for us to follow. So now let's run this code uh, just to make sure that there are no errors in this code. Okay, so we get an error and that is because the file that we have created or the class that we have created is uh, named as main.java. Uh, but in our document, the name of that file should be labeled. Okay, so just a Java convention. Uh, the name of the public class should be the same as the file name. So I'll just rename this to main so that it matches with the file name. And now when I run this code, it should be able to run. Okay, so the code runs and we get some output. Now let's have a look at the code and let's try to figure out what this code is doing. So in the output, we are getting some numbers. It says i1, b0, b0 again, i1. So we are getting some ones and zeros and negative ones. And at the end, it is saying that count is negative one. So in our code, we have a class called shared and it has a static variable count. So just a class with a variable. And then there's another class called demo thread and it is extending thread. So we have a uh, string variable called thread name that will store the name of the thread. Then we have a constructor, which is initializing the name of the thread. So this code is very similar to what we did in uh, the last lab video. Now we have the run method and inside this, there is some logic. It says if uh, this dot get name dot equals i, that means if the name of this thread is i, and how do we know the name of this thread? When we create the thread in the main class, right, we are passing the name of the thread in the constructor. So that is where the name is coming from, which is i or b. So if the thread that is currently running, if that is i, then we are going to run this part of the code, this if statement. Else if the thread name is b, then we will run this part of the code. So there are two sections or two different sections of code that is going to run depending on what the name of the thread is. If we create the thread and run it as the name i, then one condition will execute. And if we create the thread with the name b, then some other section will execute. Now let's see what each of these sections do. So if the name of the thread is i, then we are running this part of the code and it is printing the name of the thread. Then there's a for loop and what that does is it runs five times from zero to five. And then inside the for loop, we are incrementing this count variable. And where is this count variable coming from? It is from the class that we had on top, the shared class. So it is trying to increment the value of count each uh, time the for loop runs or in each iteration. That means the count variable should be incremented five times when this for loop runs. And after incrementing 
we are printing the value of count then we are doing thread dot sleep so the thread will sleep for some time after each iteration so all that this uh, first condition does is it is going to increment the value of count five times so initially the count variable is zero and once this for loop runs the count variable should become five then in the second part of the if we are again doing something similar we are running the for loop once again five times but this time instead of incrementing we are decrementing the value of count and then after decrementing we are trying to print the value in each iteration and then again we are doing thread dot slip so in summary if we create the thread by the name i then it is going to increment this count variable five times and if we create the thread as b then that is going to decrement the count variable five times then inside of our main class we are creating two instance of that class and we are naming them as i and b then we are shutting both the threads and then we have join and then the code ends and at the end we are printing the value of count now when we create this thread the name of the threads will be initialized to i and b and then when we start thread one that is tt1 then that should increment the value of count five times that means uh, the value of count variable should go from zero to five and then when thread two starts it should decrement the value from five all the way back to zero that means when thread one is executing we should get values as zero one two three four and then when thread two runs we should get uh, values printed as four three two one and zero but when we run the code we get one zero zero and once only and at the end we get two so what is the problem here the problem is that we are having race condition a uh, race condition is when two or more threads are competing or we can say racing for the same resource and if there's no order in which they are allowed to access the resource then the threads can corrupt the resource and it will no longer be consistent now when we try to increment a variable that increment operation is not a single or atomic operation because behind the scenes there is a lot more happening so a single increment operation may look something like this so if you recall the assembly language from cs uh, uh, 211 so to increment we will first do a read operation we can say read count and then to increment we will add one and then we will store it back so you can see that there are three operations involved in just a single increment operation in our code in java so ideally each thread should be allowed to perform uh, all of these three operations on the variable before any other thread is given a chance but since the threads are not synchronized they can attempt to read and update uh, the variable at the same time for example let's say we have the count variable as zero initially and let's say we want to run the thread two times so thread a will increment the variable two times and thread b will decrement the variable two times so in our output we should get something like this right we should get zero then one then two that is for thread a and then after thread a is done then thread b should go and it should decrement the count variable so we should get two one and zero but as we have seen previously that there could be any order in which the threads can run so maybe thread b runs first then i runs then i runs again and then b runs now when this order happens then the values that we will get is something else so let's see what do we get so when b runs the value of count will become negative one then when i runs the value will become zero because it is incrementing once then again i runs then we increment once and then when b runs we get zero so we should have got zero one two and two one zero but what we are getting is negative one zero one zero so they are not getting incremented or decremented at the right time because both the threads are trying to execute their task on that count variable so how do we fix this 
and the solution is to synchronize the thread so that only one thread is allowed to execute at one time and there are a number of ways of synchronizing and one of them is semaphores so what semaphores will do is it will allow only one thread to access a resource at one time and it will not allow any other thread to enter while a thread is accessing the resource so it does that by allowing a particular thread to lock a resource while it is using that and if there's any other thread that is trying to access the same resource, then it will not be able to use it because that resource is locked by some other thread. So until the current thread unlocks that resource, no other thread will be able to use that. So what semaphores does is it is going to acquire the lock before a thread runs. So we acquire the lock and then we allow a thread to run. So we can say thread A runs over here, thread A runs and completes and then once thread i completes it is going to release the lock now while thread i is running over here the resource is logged so when thread b comes it is going to see that the resource is logged because this particular flag is high at the moment so thread b will not be able to access that and the only way that thread b can use that resource is only if thread i releases the lock so once thread A completes, it is going to release the lock and it is going to become available for thread B. So what thread B does, when it goes for that resource, it is going to lock the resource. So thread B will also lock it. And then thread B runs and completes its task. So when thread B is done, it is going to release the lock. Then the lock again becomes available. Now in our example over here, we wanted to run the threads in this order that means we should first run i then i again then i again then once i is done then we run b then b and b again so we should first run i once i is done then we run b but when we run it without any synchronization we get something like this the order is not consistent and we get some random values because what happens in here is while a particular thread is executing the second thread comes in and tries to execute its task and none of them are able to complete their task so when we try to log the resources only one thread will be able to access the resource at one time that means until thread a completes right until thread a completes its task thread b will not be able to interfere and then once thread a is done then thread b can continue now the order in which this two happens can still be either way either b can run or i can run but the main point over here is that until a thread completes uh, its job another thread will not be able to interfere so we can either start with thread i or thread b but while a thread is running the other thread cannot come in and this is how we do it now let's see how we can do that using our code in Java. Now semaphores allow a thread to do something. So in the thread class, in the constructor, we will uh, try to initialize the semaphore. And inside the thread class, we will create a variable of type semaphore. Let's call it a semaphore. Then in the constructor along with the thread name, let's also pass a semaphore. And inside the constructor, we will initialize this semaphore to the one that was passed in the function as the parameter. Now where in our code is the main part happening, that is where we are trying to increment or decrement, it is over here, right, inside this if. So this is where the main task of i comes in, that is we print this message starting thread uh, and then thread i and then trying to increment the variable five times. So before we start doing this work, what we will do is we will acquire the lock. So we will say semaphore.acquire. So this is going to lock the resource that I is currently using. And then after getting the lock, I will do whatever it has to do. And then once I is done, at the end, it is going to release the lock. So over here we can say, 
semaphore dot release so this will release the log that i had acquired and then we'll do the same thing with the other one so before thread b runs we will again acquire the log and once thread b is done at the end we will release the log semaphore dot release Right, so before I runs, it is going to acquire the log, then do whatever it has to do, and then once I is done, it is going to release the log. Then same for thread B. Thread B will acquire the log, and when thread B is done with its job, then it will release the log. Then inside the main class, we will create a semaphore object. Let's call it semaphore and we'll create a new instance of semaphore now this takes one parameter and let's pass in one and this one is the initial permit that means we will start the log with one so thread i when thread i goes it is going to make it zero and then once it is done it is going to make it one again then when thread b goes it is going to make the variable or the semaphore to zero and then once thread b is done it will make it back to one that means when the value is zero then the second thread will know that it is currently being held by some other resource or thread and it cannot acquire that log so it has to wait until the value becomes one again then in the constructor we are passing the semaphore variable over here in both the threads right and that is all that we have to do to synchronize the threads and let's run this code now. Uh, we get some error. It says an interrupted exception. Uh, semaphore dot acquire, and we are getting the error over here. So if you press Alt and Enter, it is going to give some hint. So it says surround with try and catch. So let's surround the semaphore dot acquire with the try and catch. And the same thing uh, in the second one. So again, uh, surround with try and catch. And let's run this again so it compiles and now we are getting the result as expected so we are getting one two three four five and then four three two one zero so it goes from zero and then one two three four five then back to four three two one and finally zero so anytime we run this code we are always going to end with zero in the previous one we were not ending with zero we were at times ending with two or negative one or zero but with the synchronized code using semaphores we are always going to end the count variable with zero right run again right so again thread a is running incrementing it five times then thread b decreases it five times and we again end up with count as zero right so no matter how many times i run this code we are still going to end up with zero so this time thread b ran first so it is going negative one all the way up to negative five then thread increments and again we end up with zero so just as i mentioned the order can be different i can run first or b can run first but whichever thread runs it is going to complete its job and then the other thread will enter right but this time our result is consistent we are always getting the count variable back to zero right i'll run this again so thread is running first then b runs and we will again get end up with count as zero so i'll scroll through the code so you can have a look at the code so we had the shared class which had a count variable which both the threads were trying to use then we had the thread demo constructor and the class and then we had if and else so in the first one uh, the first for loop will increment it five times and then in the second one uh, the second for loop will decrement it five times and then we had our main class and inside in here we were uh, running the two threads and we also used semaphore to synchronize the two threads so that each thread can complete its task until the other thread comes in so that is all for this week's uh, lab and for the submission make sure to complete the exercise and uh, you can zip the project file and then submit in the dropbox 
so that's all for this uh, video thank you for watching